For our first after lunch speaker, uh, we'd like to continue on our pre-lunch theme, uh, looking a little bit at Atomic Red Team. So writing detections of attack techniques is all well and good, but how do you know if they actually work without the expense and complexity of a red team? So tackling a common problem in working with attack, how do you define and improve coverage using these types of tools? So please welcome to the stage Red Canaries, Brian Donahue. All right, now it's on. Um, so I'm gonna focus on it uh, from two different sort of angles. One, uh, the first thing we're gonna talk about is uh, how, there we go, how we define coverage in Atomic Red Team. And then I'm gonna talk about an exercise we went through to sort of actually figure out like what our coverage is. And the reason for this is kind of twofold as well. Uh, we want to be able to show folks like what kind of coverage they can expect to get with Atomic Red Team. We also want people to know, like, if they want to contribute, like, where are our weak spots? Uh, where can we improve coverage uh, so they can contribute there? All right. Uh, again, I'm Brian Donahue. That's me right there. Um, so <laughs> I spent some time as a journalist covering information security and privacy at a news outlet called Threat Post. I then became a cyber threat intelligence analyst, worked for a little company down the road you might have heard of called Booz Allen Hamilton. I uh, dabbled briefly in marketing since. I'm now uh, the principal security specialist on the community team at Red Canary, where I kind of do a mix of all of the things I've always done. Um, so basically, I, I write, I help other people write, I do research, I help other people do research, uh, and I talk all about security. So this is my fourth time attending AttackCon, uh, my third time speaking. So huge thanks to the MITRE team for continuing to invite me, invite me here. Big apologies to everyone who has to listen to my dumb voice again. Although, really the reason I'm here today is because I live close to AttackCon. My co-presenter lives quite far away from AttackCon. Uh, this is Adam Mashinchi, uh, right there. Uh, he is the director of open source programs at Red Canary. So he's sort of like a product manager for Atomic Red Team and some other things as well. Uh, and one of the things that I guess he's you know, wanted to do is sort of take a look at Atomic Red Team from like a really uh, product-y perspective, which is kind of what we're going to be talking about. So uh, in case anyone's wondering, Atomic Red Team is a library of tests. They're designed to test your, uh, your detective controls or validate your visibility, right? Like, Someone tells you that a tool will alert on a thing, you run the atomic test and you see if it alerts or not. Now, you might be asking yourself, what does this have to do with MITRE ATT&CK? Well, MITRE ATT&CK is our Dewey Decimal System. Uh, it is the classification system that we use to organize Atomic Red Team. So if you go into the Atomic Red Team repo, you open the Atomics folder, you're gonna notice a bunch of technique IDs in there. Um, so that's how we organize it. All right, so back to the actual problem. Um, so let's start with sort of defining coverage. So uh, the naive approach to it is like this breadth approach, right? And a lot of people have talked about that going from like, you know, top left of the matrix to bottom right and putting a checkbox on every technique you have a test for, right? There's value in that, um, but it's kind of naive. Uh, what we're also interesting, interested in is depth, right? Like how well do a group of tests cover a technique? And then the kind of, like counterintuitive or not so intuitive other aspect of coverage that we've been thinking about is test difficulty. Uh, because we want Atomic Red Team to kind of be like a big tent uh, with a lot of people welcome in it. Uh, so we don't want to have the tests be only available to people who are super experienced. Uh, we want them to be simple to run. All right, so Adam told me that this problem one, problem B thing was a joke in the slide deck. It's a joke that I don't get. Um, but so, like, we've defined coverage, but we also have to figure out now, like, how do we actually figure out what our coverage is in Atomic Red Team? Um, but, like, who works on free stuff, right? Uh, Atomic Red Team is pretty much 100% community maintained. And it gets harder when we have, like, a really big project to do, say, like, doing a holistic gap analysis of how well we cover MITRE ATT&CK. So... We hired an intern. 
Um, and in true Red Canary fashion, I think this is our first intern we've ever hired. Uh, we were like, let's have the intern work on the free thing. So um, a, couple of, a couple of things about internships. Like first and foremost, if you're going to hire an intern, pay them. It's really scummy if you don't pay your interns. Um, also, work with educational institutions. Like we're in DC right now, just down the road is the Harvard of Fairfax, George Mason. They've got plenty of potential interns there. Uh, once you've actually hired them, like treat them like they're actually like your teammates, right? Uh, don't just make them do menial tasks. We all do menial tasks sometimes, hopefully not exclusively. So give them work that is uh, like beneficial and is gonna help them in the long term. Also don't rely on like your great culture as the benefit because your culture is probably not that great and that's a weird benefit to offer somebody. <laughs> So uh, shout out, Karen the intern, Karen Roberts gets all the credit for all the work that was done here. Uh, he is a great uh, cybersecurity, or he's a great open source contributor rather. He's worked for a few cybersecurity firms in the past. Um, he also enjoys hacking video games, which is funny because we were talking yesterday about how like the pipeline for tomorrow's CNA, CNO folks is probably coming from like the video game hacking scene today. So if you guys wanna find good hackers, I guess go hang out wherever video game hacking happens. Uh, and if you want to keep up with uh, with Cameron Roberts' exploits, he is junior or one equals one on Twitter. So what did Cameron do? Um, so first, we wanted to do an analysis of Atomic Red Team coverage. So he created a script that would run through Atomic Red Team, uh, generate a report that we could do analysis on, create visuals so that we could sort of uh, like communicate the coverage externally. We also wanted to be able to sort tests by difficulty. Um, so we had to create another means of sort of figuring out a test's difficulty uh, and then generating data on that. And right now we're sort of in this gap analysis phase where we're reviewing uh, all the work that Cameron did, looking at gaps in Atomic Red Team, and then making a plan to fill them based on some pretty funny math and uh, some effort to value ratio stuff. So counting things. This is kind of the breadth analysis, although the breadth and depth analysis, like there's some gray area between them. Um, so first we started with Python. And I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, I can count. Well, it's a little more complicated than that. Um, there's a lot of nuance in Atomic Red Team. The example that we chose here is like, the thing that you're running a test on isn't necessarily the same thing as what you're running the test from, which may seem obvious, but it wasn't super obvious when like, mostly we just had Windows tests because then you're running it on Windows against Windows, right? But like when you get into the infrastructure as a service land, like maybe you're running a test against AWS, but you're running it from like a bash script, right? So more complicated than just manually counting, right? We got all these platforms, things are getting deprecated in, in MITRE ATT&CK, they're getting deprecated in Atomic Red Team as well. Um, there's sub techniques. So we created a Python script, uh, shifted it to a CSV, and then we did pivot tables because that's what you do. Um, once we did it in Python and looked at everything, we kind of re, re, repeated the process using JavaScript so that we could create uh, these nice graphics. So in the background here is the heat map that basically shows you know, green, lots of tests for a technique, red, not as many. Uh, the foreground image here is um, just a look at it by, by, by technique, where, or by tactic rather, where dark red is techniques that have coverage and light red is ones that don't. Um, for what it's worth, we used Google Charts to do this so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Then there was the categorizing of things. Um, so this is where we wanted to figure out like, okay, well, this test has lots of tests for it, but it doesn't have any Linux tests. Or that test has tests, but they're all really hard, right? And like, this is kind of further complicated by the fact that some techniques are, in tr are like inherently tricky, right? So like cloud storage and object discovery is a good example, because you have to like pay for an account you might have to like cram credentials into a script and send them out over the internet, much harder than just copying and pasting a command. So how did we come up with this scoring rubric? Well, uh, all of the atomic tests are in YAML files. So we wanted something that could just scrape those YAML files and spit out a score. So we created multiple if statements and it kind of looked like this. This is just an example, um, but bit, like the things we wanted to know, like can you just copy and paste the test? Uh, are there prerequisites? Are there default arguments? Do you need a second machine? Do you have to elevate your privilege level? Um, do you need credentials, right? All the things that, that led into this zero to nine difficulty scale. Once we had done all of that, we knew two things, right? We knew where our coverage gaps were, so we knew where we had a technique that didn't have tests, 
or a technique that didn't have tests for all of the associated platforms. Uh, and then we had these difficulty gaps as well, right? Like we knew where techniques only had super tricky tests. Um, so that led us to the next point, which is like, how do we fill these gaps, right? How do we make things better and easier? So this is kind of the heat map to end all heat maps in a sense, which I think is like the third time someone said that at a TACCON over the years. Um, so it's probably not actually the heat map to end all heat maps. There will be more heat maps. Uh, so anyway, this one kind of looks more at difficulty, right? So red are techniques uh, for which the tests are all kind of tricky to execute. And as you get to green, they get easier. And then white, there's no, there's no tests for those techniques. So what we want to do is like turn this whole uh, attack navigator layer green, right? Um, I admit, like, there's never going to be a day when all the tests are going to be easy, but we can uh, strive to make them easier and easier. This is Adam's funny math about, like, how you figure out what to do first and then what to do last, right? Like, start out uh, prioritizing the things that are uh, easy to do and provide value, and then work your way back until you get to those things that are hard to do and provide less value. So. Uh, when do we get to see all of this stuff? So we're going to launch a cool new website, um, and it's going to include the outcome of all of this analysis. So all of these graphs and stuff are going to be on there. Uh, you're going to be able to see, like, basically, you're going to be able to understand what you can expect to get out of Atomic Red Team, like, as a product. Um, and it also can serve as a guide for folks who want to contribute tests, but they, they don't know where to get started with that. Um, we'll also be adding more atomics in an effort to sort of start closing off some of these gaps. Uh, and we'll write up a blog that's going to detail like how and why we did all of this. And that blog effectively will be like a better, more eloquent and more detailed version of this talk. So final takeaways. Once again, pay your interns, people. Um, also, like to reiterate, reiterate what I just said, like coverage and gap analysis are underway. A new site and new tests are coming soon. Also, please, 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 like this is community developed. Please contribute to Atomic Red Team. Uh, you can see us at atomicredteam.io. Uh, hit me up on, on Slack or on Twitter. Talk to Adam Mashinchi. We've got a community manager named Morel Bailey. Like, come to any of us, uh, and we'll help you figure out how you can, how you can contribute. And that's my talk. Fantastic. And difficulty is something I like peaked. I was like, well, that's awesome. Never really thought about that. So thank you. And also just thank you and you know the rest of the community for you know not only adopting this idea, because a couple years ago we saw it and we're like, that's really clever, but exactly as you said, rallying around it and kind of leading the way in terms of how to build, maintain, and really push a community in the right direction. So thank you. Yeah, thank you.